Good morning, Robert. <laughs> I'm glad to be with you. Uh, thank you. And I'm talking with Robert David Steele, who is a former CIA uh, officer and also you worked in military intelligence, I understand. And yes. you have lived during your childhood in uh, both Asia and, um, and uh, South America. Could, right. you, could you tell a little bit about yourself with your own word? Okay, I'm just trying to do do not disturb here. Uh, okay, well, I grew up as the son of an oil man, an oil engineer. So we spent, uh, we spent a decade in South America, including the Caribbean. And then we spent a decade in Asia, including four years in Vietnam, where I was the son of an oil man. I was not a soldier uh, or Marine. Um, while we were in Asia, my father was uh, captured by the North Vietnamese militia when he was sailing a sailboat at the end of his time in Vietnam, a sailboat he built from uh, Saigon to Hong Kong. The militia sold him to the Chinese. The Chinese put him in a guest house where they gave him a big bottle of beer with every meal after they asked him what Americans drank with every meal. Uh, he wrote a book about that called Yachtsman in Red China. I graduated from... Um, High school in Singapore in 1970, where my father finished his career with ESSO and came back to the United States. I have three graduate degrees, uh, one in um, international relations uh, with a thesis on predicting and preventing revolution, a second in public administration with a thesis on strategic information mismanagement by the U.S. government, and a third, the Naval uh, War College, a diploma, uh, where I focused on defense economics. There is nothing economic about how we spend on defense. Defense is not about peace, and it's not about protection. It's about spending money. Um, from there, I, um, I joined the Marine Corps. Actually, I joined the Marine Corps after the first graduate degree. I was an infantry officer. Then I came back and uh, was recruited by the CIA, roughly one in 25,000 gets accepted. I became a clandestine case officer. I did three back-to-back -back tours overseas. I did three Washington tours, one in global counterintelligence against a denied area target, a second tour in advanced information technology where they created the artificial intelligence staff around me, and lastly, a third tour in future satellite planning. Uh, from there, the Marine Corps asked me to leave the CIA and create the Marine Corps intelligence activity, which I did. And that's where I discovered that spies don't know anything about most of the world. Uh, spies basically focus on stealing secrets from a very limited number of targets, such as the Soviet Union or China or Libya or Iran, what they call hard targets. They know nothing about Burundi, Haiti, uh, Somalia, uh, or the environment, poverty, infectious disease. So I created the open source intelligence discipline. And I did that for many years. And most recently, I wrote the Open Source Everything Manifesto because I've discovered that we can lift the 5 billion poor at 10% of the cost of the failed Western paradigm. So there's a very clear idea in my head of how to create a world brain that shares all information in all languages with all humans, how we create virtual direct democracy so that every human has voice and vote over every issue, local to global, and finally, how we achieve the 17 United Nations uh, Sustainable Development Goals at 10% of the cost of the Western paradigm using open source everything engineering. My biggest problem so far is I can't get most governments to listen to me because they profit from the waste in the Western model. Every government politician gets a 5% kickback or bribe for doing it the old way. So part of the problem is getting the people to understand that we should not have to pay 90% of the profit to banks and we should not have to spend 50% waste in order to create a prosperous world at peace that works for everyone. Yeah, and I know you travel a lot and we are going to talk about your plans for, your, for the future and uh, okay. your plan for next year and uh, you have uh, visions and ideas how we could fix the world, but how many languages do you speak or understand? I only speak two. Uh, I can't count French. I'm fluent in Spanish. My mother was Colombian. I grew up in, in Colombia. And then I refined my Spanish in El Salvador and uh, other countries where I worked. Um, I speak passing French 
after about two to three weeks in Provence or something like that. Becoming fluent in French is one of my, my uh, ambitions. Yeah, and I know you also write reviews. You have written a lot of reviews of books. And you this have is, written books. This is true. This, this, this happened by accident. I'm an author. And my first two books, On Intelligence, Spies and Secrecy in an Open World, which had a foreword by Senator David Bourne, and my second book, The New Craft of Intelligence, uh, Personal, Public, and Political, which had a foreword by Senator Pat Roberts, both of those books had 150 annotated bibliographic reviews. So when Amazon started the review process, I just uploaded all, 100, all 300, 150 each, all 300 of those reviews, and I was instantly a top 1,500 reviewer. I was then invited to speak to a parliament that might have been the French parliament, um, and I was intimidated. So I read 50 books and did summary reviews as part of my notes. And after that, it just became a habit. I was spending $5,000 a year on books, and I would mostly read books on airplanes. For example, most of the books here over my shoulder I just read on the, on the trip to and from Tokyo, where I met Ben Fulford, a, a great man with some extraordinary insights into the real dark, deep state and everything that's behind the banking system that is destroying the world. Um, so I recently removed all of my reviews from Amazon because Amazon is now censoring books and reviews that are not politically correct. Well, this is a real concern for me, just as Germany's censoring of people who question the Holocaust is a real concern for me. There absolutely was a Holocaust, but most Jews died from typhus and starvation and Allied bombing. Uh, they did not die from being gassed in ovens. That's basically a lie. Uh, and it's something we all have to come to grips with. If you, you cannot make peace for the future if you don't understand the reality of the past. Yeah, and uh, almost you can be caught for hate speech if you say that. Well, maybe... let, me, let me tell you, I've published a number of articles that are getting a lot of attention. And one of them is about how the Zionists, who are not the same as the Jews. Uh, Zionism is bad, Judaism is good. Um, uh, Jews in that religion deserve every bit of respect as much as Buddhism, Catholicism, Protestantism, the Muslims, uh, Seventh-day Adventists, and so forth. The Zionists are actually a neo-fascist cabal that is trying to destabilize the Middle East and destabilize the world, and they're basically a parasite within the United States political system that is making the United States into a vehicle for war and waste. Um, I wrote an article after Cynthia McKinney, my, one of my favorite people. Cynthia McKinney is a goddess, a humanitarian. Uh, she really understands the horrible things that we, the American taxpayers, are paying for in the genociding of the Palestinians, uh, whose land it is. Israel is an invented state. Uh, Shlomo Sand has written a, a really wonderful book on the invention of the Israeli state as well as the invention of the Jewish religion. In fact, let me make a point. This is a book that I just read on the way back, uh, and it makes the point that the Catholic Church was invented by Caesar. It was invented precisely to keep all the little people turning the other cheek, render unto Caesar, love thine enemy, the Catholic Church may possibly have been the greatest psychological operation in the history of humanity. Uh, and so this is, this is the kind of conversation I want people to have. Uh, you know, the other book, uh, where is it? The other book that I'm reading now, I, I'm probably not going to speak in Tehran, but this is the best book on how Palestinian lands have been stolen from the Palestinians by the Zionist State of Israel. Um, and I really have to say, People need to understand that Jerusalem is not included in the state of Israel. It was explicitly excluded uh, in the United Nations and the formation documents for Israel. So talking about moving the U.S. capital to Israel is an act of war. Uh, it is not something that Donald Trump should be, should be doing, although I suspect he's, he's really got a strategic um, uh, perspective there, and he's trying to basically get the Arabs to unite again. Uh, instead of being a little people, a greedy people uh, who's not going any, anywhere, in the words of Lawrence of Arabia. So we need to understand our history. We under, need to understand the truth of the matter. Um, and I feel privileged to stand on the shoulders of others. I gave away, this is just what's left of my library. 
Uh, when I joined the United Nations in 2010, I gave my library to George Mason University, and I'm, I'm obscenely proud of the fact that it took three specialist librarians to evaluate my library. Uh, and uh, now my books have gone into the university system, which is, which is probably okay, but I do miss them because there's nothing to replace looking at a book and having your hands and your eyes on a book. I even remember where I had a note on what side of the page. Yeah, I would mention just two things about the Zionism that you said. Uh, just a few days ago, uh, there was a problem that the Polish government said that even Jews, or I don't call them even Jews, like Rothschild, that they, right, the Khazarian mafia. Yeah, that they have also caused, they have caused the Holocaust or the atrocity. Well, let me, let me say that it's clearly established in history. I mean, not only did Adolf Hitler survive the war, the top Germans moved to Argentina and the United States, and the most evil of the top Germans moved into the Central Intelligence Agency and the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, where they really continued to do great evil, including mind control and genetic experiments and so forth. So there's a lot of history that needs to come out about the migration of the worst of Germany to the United States and Argentina. What I was saying before, the Zionists have perfected the use of hate speech and information manipulation in order to conceal history. I have published an article on the deep state Zionist censorship, manipulation, and digital assassination system. And your listeners can find it at tinyurl forward slash Google Gestapo. Google, Facebook, uh, Twitter, YouTube, they are all censoring information and manipulating information, and they are all supporting the fake news narrative of the U.S. government, the mainstream media, and the deep state. <clears throat> Poland is absolutely right. Uh, there is documented history that Hitler agreed to ransom all Jews for $3 million, and the Zionist Jews in Switzerland refused to pay that ransom because they wanted Jews to die. They said, we need dead Jews, and these lesser Jews don't matter. You know, there's, there's a class system in Zionism, just like there is everywhere else. So the fact of the matter is, it was the Jews themselves who chose to murder most of the Jews as part of their strategic plan for creating a state of Israel. Yeah, and uh, a lot, the previous conference that we had uh, from Illusion to Reality, it was October, uh, the year before, it was October 2016, and eight of eight people, three of us, got problems with court. One of them is a German Jew, he is Jewish, real Jew, German, and uh, he has got charges for hate speech. Those, he, those charges are bogus. In fact, I have decided not to travel to Germany. Uh, I am not going to Germany, and I eventually see Germany being boycotted uh, because they just arrested a Canadian uh, a woman who has made some very measured, thoughtful, truthful remarks. So the German government, which is, Germany is a vassal state to the United States. It was never free after World War II. Uh, and in fact, there's an excellent book by a former director of German intelligence who talks about how Germany has always been a vassal state of the United States, and the German government is in fact not free. Well, the German government has also become the new Gestapo, uh, and they are censoring speech because they are under the control of the Zionists and their puppet government in the United States of America. And let me say very clearly, I'm a patriot. I run for president in the United States of America. I may run for president again. I believe in the U.S. Constitution and the values represented by the U.S. Constitution. I, I founded Hashtag Unrig specifically to destroy the two-party tyranny that represents 30% of the voters and is bought and paid for by the U.S. banks. It is owned by the deep state. Uh, so I think Americans now are becoming awake and aware and they're becoming free. And 2018 is the year in which I'm going to help try and put veterans into political office. Our Congress today is only 18% veteran, and our Congress today is totally corrupt. So putting veterans with integrity into the U.S. Congress and making sure that the independents, the libertarians, the Greens, and others get into the U.S. Congress is, I think, the next big step toward restoring the ethics 
and the legality and the openness of the U.S. government. Mm -hmm. And uh, you speak against uh, the deep state, but here in Europe we have the same problem. So I speak more about uh, like shadow world government. There are two different things. Let me let me add, let me address that. The shadow government is the best of the servant class. The shadow government basically includes the politicians, generally of two parties that do not represent 70% of the country, and the a select group of senior bureaucrats, perhaps 10%. I always like to emphasize that 90% of the people in any political party or in any government bureaucracy are good people trapped in a bad system. It's just that last 10% that is in the service of the deep state. So the shadow government is the best of the servant class. They in turn work for the deep state. The deep state, in my understanding, begins with the descendants of Caesar, and then the Vatican, the Rothschilds, and the Chabad Jews. And they in turn use the 10% of the Freemasons and the Knights of Malta as fixers, and they use the city of London, Wall Street, and all central banks, which are not nationalized, all central banks as the managers. So you have the deep state on top, and then you have the shadow government below that, and then you have the, the intelligence community services, the 10% of the intelligence secret services, like this Dutch banker just uh, talked about recently. They are the dirty war element of the deep state. Mm, uh, there are people like whistleblowers uh, who talk about that there is one man at the top and seven men or seven yeah. persons who take care of a different like within the illuminati uh, pyramid i don't i don't have any direct knowledge i i do believe that there is a control mechanism above the rothschilds i'm just back from tokyo where i had an excellent uh, series of meetings with ben fulford and and a number of others and he has persuaded me that there is a level of authority above the vatican the rothschilds and the chabad jews but it's not something I have any direct knowledge of myself. But actually, there are three things I uh, I wanted to talk uh, with you that uh, Ben Fulford knows. Uh, I remember it was Ben Fulford who told me, who said on his program or his news uh, that uh, Bilderberg, uh, it must be 2014 in Copenhagen, that... Uh, uh, he didn't say that the head of Illuminati was there, but he said the name. He said his name. He said uh, William Van Down was at Bilderberg 2014. So Ben Fulford knows uh, the name of the man at the top. He must know something about him. He well, ben, ben and Neil Keenan and a few others that I talk to are very, very well informed and they know things I don't know. I myself don't know, so I won't speculate. No, but uh, this is the man, William Van Down, uh, born 20th of my May 19th. Right. I, I don't know him, so I really have no interest in discussing yeah. him. No. Okay. Um, um, I would like to talk also about the break of a society that um, like Kerry Cassidy, Project Camelot, use it more that these people break away society, has the knowledge and also that they uh, have been uh, in space, they have covered up uh, very important things for us that we are not alone, that there are other species. Could you say anything about about I have, I have no direct knowledge about anything having to do with extraterrestrial uh, matters, but I have read a number of books. The one that impressed me the most <clears throat> was called Project Human Extinction. And it talks about 26 extraterrestrial species, the last six of which are pure energy. I do believe that there is more intelligent life uh, in the cosmos. Uh, I do believe that there have been extraterrestrial visits to Earth going back thousands of years, but I have no direct knowledge. I do believe that the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, which my, my friends with direct access tells me stands for not a space agency, 
uh, rather than National Aeronautics and Space Agency. That's a little joke in American English. Um, I believe they need to be completely investigated. I believe that there are extraterrestrial technologies, there are human adaptions of extra technologies, and there are repressed technologies that could have given free energy and unlimited desalinated water to everyone on the planet. Uh, right now, the people are being kept the way pigs are kept in a pig pen, instead of being allowed to run free like maverick horses. So we're at a turning point in history, and everything I'm reading suggests that 2012 was a pivot year, and that 2012 was the beginning of a thousand years of peace and prosperity in which the 99% overthrow the 1% and come into their fullness as humanity and at that point, I think we will also see, somewhere in the next 15 to 20 years, we will see significant disclosure about extraterrestrials, and we will ourselves be admitting what we have been doing secretly uh, with bases on Mars and elsewhere. I have no direct knowledge, but I was told directly in the presence of Cynthia McKinney uh, by a NASA PhD who was recently retired that we've had a base on Mars for 15 years, and there are 10,000 people there. While I have no direct knowledge, I absolutely believe that PhD person. And the people who have been attacking me for saying something like that are in fact working for the Illuminati. They're the best of the servant class. They're trying to discredit me. I have a federal lawsuit against them. Uh, and I will win eventually because the truth is the truth and I am all about the truth. Yeah, and if you were in president and uh... Obviously, you are open-minded. Would you tell everybody immediately? Well, look. Uh, yes, I would. But first, I would put a Ranger battalion up NASA's ass. I would have every senior official in NASA brought in, interrogated, polygraphed. I would open every single door, every single basement across the entire NASA uh, facilities uh, list, uh, and I would get to the bottom of it. Yeah, the time for secrets, we still need spies and secrecy, but in a very narrow sense to work in a counterintelligence way against ruthless uh, criminal organizations, including the Chabad Jews, the Vatican, and the Rothschilds. By and large, I am the founder of the modern open source everything discipline. And that's why my book, The Open Source Everything Manifesto, is now cult reading. In fact, it's been translated into Chinese and it's about to be translated into seven other languages. Oh, but I'm not trying to sell the book because in, in some ways the book is outdated. People can find my ideas for free online at robertdavidsteele.com. And so I've now moved to a new place where I'm trying to combine uh, nano gold, gold backed crypto cryptocurrency, where I'm an advisor, with a world brain that connects all humans to all information in all languages all the time, with sustainable development achieved through. Uh, open source everything engineering. And so the nano gold as a currency uh, for people rather than banks is intended to pay that 10% to lift us up regardless of whether or not governments cooperate or, uh, or ignore us. When you talk about NASA, uh, there are a lot of uh, whistleblowers and uh, people from military who talk about uh, flyby of a planetary system or something planetary uh, and that it's close to us and that NASA is covering up the information um, and for example J um, John Moore who worked also for for military I have yeah I have no direct knowledge let me just say two yeah. things number one number one I absolutely believe that NASA has a a a secret leadership. I believe the director of NASA has actually not been briefed on all of the secret programs. I believe that NASA, like the CIA, has a black budget that is not known to Congress. When Donald Rumsfeld was being interrogated by Cynthia McKinney the day before 9-11, which was partly a cover-up of major financial crimes, um, he was reluctant to say that he hadn't lost $2.3 trillion. He'd simply spent it on outer space and underground, deep underground military bases and genetic experiments and all of this stuff. The bottom line here is that we need a complete house cleaning in the US government, as well as a radical reduction of the size of the federal government to perhaps at best one third of its current size, probably closer to, to 
uh, we need to cut 75% and, and end up with 25% that is in a, a federated service to the states. We have lost, in the United States, we have lost individual rights and we have lost state rights. The United States of America is a federation of states. It is not a mob. Um, so over the next few years, I see the states reasserting their authority or leaving the union. Mm -hmm. Uh, have you heard about Pastor um, Lynn Civilians? Who, what? Uh, Lynn Civilians, uh, American, who um, attended in 80s meetings on the Bahamas with this elite. That no. They have meetings and uh, they prepared attack, prepared attack against humanity, really, but you don't know him. No, I no, I don't, and 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 I do believe that humanity is under attack by enemies within humanity. Uh, I do believe that that, for example, Kenya just discovered that five hundred thousand Kenyan women had been sterilized by vaccinations, and this is a known objective of the Bill uh, Gates Foundation to sterilize women worldwide. Um, so I believe that there are a number of deeply evil things that are being done to people because the governments are out of control. The governments are either being bribed or blackmailed in order to not pay attention to protecting the public interest, or the governments themselves are seeking to sterilize women and do other bad things. We now know that uh, HIV AIDS was created by the United States of America and spread in Africa. Uh, and when I say United States of America, I mean a small evil element within the United States of America, not as a national policy per se. Um, so we are moving toward an era. The subtitle of my last book was Truth, Transparency, and Trust. We are completely devoid of the truth. We completely lack transparency, and there is no longer any trust between people and their governments or people and corporations, people and banks, and so forth. So the next 20 years, are about empowering the 99% and rebuilding trust and restoring the whole concept of community and kinship and ethics uh, between people. I don't even think about artificial intelligence. Most artificial intelligence is actually artificial stupidity. And you have been nominated for Nobel Peace Prize also. Well, in theory, I, I know I've been recommended. I'm told I was nominated, but the nominations are secret. Oh, yeah, and uh, uh, you uh, you spoke about uh, free energy. Is it because of uh, what you are doing for humanity already now? Well, the, 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 the recommendation for the Nobel Peace Prize, which was done by the editor-in-chief of Defense and Intelligence Norway, John Kalvik, uh, who in turn was asked to do that by a minister of the Norwegian government, who then said he would submit it as a, as a nomination. Uh, that was because of my role in trying to develop open source everything as a solution for all of the world's problems. Now, we really have two problems in the world. The first problem is the United States of America and Zionist Israel are bribing and blackmailing everybody of note so that governments are not doing their job. They're not protecting and empowering the public. The other problem we have is that we have 5 billion people who are poor. The one unlimited resource we have on the planet is human intelligence. So we need to basically empower the 5 billion poor with open source everything engineering. Uh, that would give them a press brick housing, free electricity, unlimited desalinated water, uh, free access to the internet and, and cellular telephone services. And that would allow them to create unimaginable amounts of wealth. Right now, we're in a position where wealth is being concentrated at the same time that the public has lost faith in the governments of the world, all of them. Uh, in fact, I've learned uh, from my FBI contacts that local governments are 10 times more corrupt than national governments. People just don't understand the degree to which local governments are giving away land and rights and waiving pollution standards and waiving taxes in return for a 10% bribe. So they're giving away the public treasury and taking 10% in return. We have to stop that. Um, I don't deserve the Nobel Peace Prize. And in fact, the Nobel Committee has been corrupt for the last 20 years. Anybody who would give Henry Kissinger a Nobel Peace Prize for killing 
20,000 Americans and 400,000 Vietnamese and Cambodians and Laotians. He, he destroyed the Paris peace talks to help Nixon win, only to accept the same conditions four years later. Henry Kissinger is a war criminal. Uh, Barack Obama should never have gotten the Nobel Peace Prize. That's idiocy. He was in office for 10 days. I'm very familiar with Alfred Nobel's will. It says very clearly that the Nobel Peace Prize is to be awarded to the individual who has done the most in the past year to demilitarize the world. No one who has received the Nobel Peace Prize in the last 20 years qualifies under the terms of Alfred Nobel's will. So I think either the will conditions need to be changed by a Norwegian legislative mandate, or the committee needs to reconnect to the intent of Alfred Nobel's will. Now, the one thing that would qualify for the Nobel Peace Prize under the original definition of the will would be Donald Trump's closing 1,000 military bases around the world. We use military bases not to advance peace or prosperity, but as lily pads for smuggling guns, gold, drugs, cash, and small children. The single best thing we could do to bring peace to the world is close all U.S. military bases overseas without exception. The second best thing we could do for the world is stop U.S. financial support for dictators in the Zionist state of Israel. Um, the third best thing we can do for peace and prosperity is what I want to do, which is why I don't think I deserve the Nobel Peace Prize, but eventually I would like to help Trump, Xi, and Putin earn the Nobel Peace Prize. And this third thing is create a nano currency that is responsive to public will, not government or banking cor uh, corruption. Create a world brain, the neosphere of Pierre Teilhard de Chardin, um, that connects the humans, the 99%, with all information and allows the creation of direct democracy, but measured in form direct democracy. I actually like Chinese Confucianism. You need both. You need top-down intelligence guidance and you need bottom-up educated participation. And last but not least, there is no reason why we cannot achieve every single one of the sustainable development goals, all 17 of them, in the next 20 to 25 years at 10% of the cost of the failed Western paradigm. If you do that, you have heaven on earth for everybody. And the only thing standing between us and heaven on earth for everybody is the Illuminati, the Rothschilds, the Vatican, the Chabad Jews, and then all of the people who are their servants. Mm. You know, I have a very different um, opinion about Nobel Peace Prize. And I don't, like the family, I have told you that I lived uh, in the house of uh, Peter Nobel, who is uh, of the family of uh, Nobel. A descendant, uh, right. Descendant, and I like him a lot. And uh, no, I'm not saying he, I don't like the Nobel family. I'm saying the Nobel Peace Prize has not been administered. I'm yeah. friends with uh, Hefferschmel. Uh, but, uh, I oh, sorry. I mean now that it's used like mind control. Yes. And, yeah. So, uh, in my opinion, it's great that you have been nominated, but it's more a reward that you have been nominated, but some by somebody who believes that you are uh, working with very good thing. But uh, for me, if somebody if the committee would say you will receive the Nobel Peace Prize, I will tell, tell them how do you even dare to say something so disgraceful to me? It's my opinion because I have worked for people in reality. Well, I agree. I mean, it's good publicity. I mean, the guy that I think should, should be considered for the Nobel Peace Prize if the will terms were redefined is Johann Galtung. I mean, Johann Galtung started the peace movement. This is a great man. Uh, he's received every award except the Nobel Peace Prize. Bottom line is it's good publicity. Uh, people understand Nobel Peace Prize. Um, but the reality is the proof is in the pudding. I have to build it. And right now, sadly, uh, CIA has blocked me from reaching President Trump or the Secretary of State, the Secretary of Defense. The whole institution, the United States government, is against my ideas because my ideas would demonstrate within a year that 70% of their budget could be cut. Okay, so anyone who's about to lose 70% of their budget is not at all enthusiastic about having me speak to Donald Trump. But Donald Trump understands that we need to cut the federal government 
by 70%. What he may not understand is that the open source agency is the fastest way to document all of that. And it's also the fastest way to provide for a smooth migration path. Because one of the things that I've developed with Del Spurlock, who was the Deputy Secretary of Labor for Ronald Reagan, is a refinement of Dell's original plan to retrain all people who lost their jobs to the downsizing of the federal government. So everyone whose job is taken away by restoring ethics to the federal government would get one year's salary and one year's training toward any redirection of their life's purpose that they wish. So it would be very much a, a soft landing. We're not gonna create 10 million unemployed people. We're gonna create 10 million people who are retrained towards something they would really like to do, to include infrastructure development, sustainable development, information technology, or simply retirement. A lot of these people are eligible for retirement. We could probably cut the government by a third just by telling everyone who's eligible for retirement, including all of the contractors who are double dipping, say, go, enjoy retirement. Yeah. It would be great if you could come to Prague seven months from now. We have a conference and you know that you are invited as a speaker and Cynthia McKinney is also invited. It's in Prague 22nd and 23rd of September 2000, uh, this year. And the day before, it's Prague Peace Prize. It's not Nobel Peace Prize. It's, yeah. uh, this is the prize, like it's a little crystal. That's beautiful. Yeah, That's and beautiful. Well, I, I certainly, I certainly support Cynthia McKinney as representative. Cynthia McKinney, for me, represents what an honest congresswoman who is black, female, and honest, uh, and she has been tireless in standing up to the Zionists and to the rights of the Palestinians. So uh, she's certainly well qualified, and she has my vote also if she were ever to run for president. Uh, Cynthia McKinney is a goddess. Uh, and I feel privileged to have photos of Cynthia McKinney and I wearing hashtag unrigged shirts. And very deliberately, she wore a white shirt and I wore a black shirt. And it's a beautiful image uh, to show to the world. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, if I'm invited and you can handle a business class ticket, I'd probably come. I'd be honored. Uh, but the bottom line is, even without the conference, I think your ideas are worthy of, of pushing out. And I'm very, very glad. Uh, to have you interview me uh, for your audience. And you know that uh, um, the Prague, Prague Peace Prize, 10 people get the, the prize if they accept it. And Cynthia McKinney is one of the 10 for 2018. Good. And uh, William Binney. I like Binney. I like mm -hmm. Binney a lot. In fact, we're having lunch on the 26th. William Binney is the top honest NSA officer who's telling the truth. And I am the top CIA officer who's telling the truth. So Benny and I are like brothers. Uh, he is to NSA what I am to CIA. Um, and we have discussed Thin Thread, which is his signal contribution, because Thin Thread allows the massive processing of information without violating the privacy of citizens. In fact, his invention, Thin Thread, with Kurt Weber and others, has passed the smell test with the European Union. Let me also say I was educated by two Czechs, uh, Bednar, uh, Charles Bednar and uh, Zdunik, uh, God, Sluk, I think it was. But Charles Bednar was the professor of political science who opened my mind to the fact that most of what we're learning is a lie. Yeah, yeah. And uh, in your field, like, uh who has built up CIA and even the German military secret service, isn't it Reinhard Gehlen, the Nazi Reinhard Gehlen? He is photographed also with uh, George Bush, Bush Sr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, people need to understand, this is, this is the best book on the CIA that I've ever read. And I have to emphasize, most of what I've read about the, most of what I've learned about the CIA, I learned after I left the CIA. When I was in the CIA, I was like a Jesuit. I was very, very happy. Uh, I thought I was a god who walked on water. I mean, or as the, as the Europeans would say, I peed perfume, uh, good old Russian saying. Um, but the bottom line here is that CIA was created by Wall Street to be a subversive element within the U.S. government. 
Alan Dulles was the leader of the assassination of John F. Kennedy, and Lyndon Baines Johnson and J. Edgar Hoover and many others participated in that. With the assassination of the U.S. government, the deep state completed its capture of the United States government. Um, all of our members of Congress today are being blackmailed by people like Jeffrey Epstein with the pedophilia tapes uh, and the Mossad. But the most shocking thing to me that I've learned in the last six years is it's not just the Mossad blackmailing our members of Congress, it's the CIA, the FBI, and uh, the NSA. They're spying on Congress in order to protect their budgets uh, and uh, in order to have impunity with respect to all of the evil things they're doing. I mean, take CIA. One evil thing that it's doing is, is killing thousands of people with drone assassinations. And 98% of those are known to be innocent men, women, and children. And then we wonder where terrorists come from. Terrorists are freedom fighters. Uh, they're exactly identical. And yet here in the United States, we're almost becoming Stalinist. The Council on Foreign Relations of the United States has proposed that American dissidents be treated as domestic terrorists. I'm not making this stuff up. It's insane. Um, so the good news is people like you and me are talking. I think that uh, there is a great awakening that is happening. I think that above all governments, there is some kind of cosmic good, some kind of elevation of human consciousness uh, happening. And I'm not really a human consciousness type of person, although I believe in humanity. I'm not a guy that stands around singing Kumbaya and holding hands. Uh, but in my own rough way, I think I'm part of this elevation of humanity, and I consider it a privilege to be alive today. Have, yes. And have you seen, uh, for example, Deborah Tavares? Do you know who she is from California? Uh, she speaks about the different types of genocide against Americans. And one of the, the types was uh, the fire the created fires in uh, geoengineering <clears throat> and also no, I agree with that I, I completely agree with that I, I believe we have directed energy weapons yeah. I believe that a number of earthquakes including Fukushima uh, a number of earthquakes and a number of forest fires are in fact created deliberately and uh, let me emphasize I think I gave it away I might yes I gave it away there's an excellent book it's time for me to give my library away again. Uh, <clears throat> there's a wonderful book by a man named Jett, J-E-T-T, -T, called Fruits of Graft. The Great Depression in the United States of America was deliberate. The single greatest depression in the U.S. economy ever was designed by the banks, and Franklin Delano Roosevelt, the president, was complicit. The Great Depression was designed to do three things. Number one, destroy the rising American middle class that was seeking political power in order to demand honest government. Two, to buy up America at depression era prices. And three, to consolidate the power of the banks over the federal government. So if you think about it, every major Great Depression and every world war has been designed of, by, and for the banks, not for the public. This is why my favorite Marine Corps general, I'm a former Marine, uh, my favorite Marine Corps general is Smedley Butler. He wrote a book called War is a Racket. And war is a racket. Everything bad that is happening to, to humanity is bad because banks can make a profit from it. And that's why central banks absolutely must be nationalized in the next couple of years. And I've just had this discussion in ASEAN uh, with some very senior people who advise the king, the new king of uh, Thailand, and I just had this discussion again in Tokyo uh, with both Japanese and Chinese uh, uh, senior figures who have access to the leadership. All central banks must be nationalized in the next couple of years. That is a non-negotiable condition for going forward. Yeah. I have so many questions, but I know that you have just 10 more minutes. So, uh, so uh, it's difficult. To... Well, I've talked, I've talked a lot. So let me give you another 30 minutes beyond that if you think you want it. Or um, maybe you want to try and, or another a follow on interview. Absolutely. If, if it would be possible, because what I would like to um, want to talk with you about that 
the government here in Czech Republic, and it's not only government, it's also, of course, police and, uh, and uh, the military, they are attacking us. No doubt about it, that there is a structure that is anti-human and that is against the citizens. And you have it in your country too. So I was thinking almost we have to do something about it right now. Your president says nothing that there are attacks on people, ordinary people, uh, with directed energy weapons. Why doesn't he even talk well, about I, I, I'm one of the original people that supported Donald Trump. I wrote the first article on how Donald Trump can win in July of 2015. It was published in Counterpunch in August of 2015. I wrote the Trump Revolution series. I've never been a president, but I have some idea of what it's like to be a president. I can just tell you that people cannot imagine what it's like to be Xi Jinping or Putin or Donald Trump. They are at a level up here of complexity and competing demands for their time uh, that is beyond imagination. What you're talking about is, well, I talk about a micro issue. I mean, I get 100 to 150 emails every day that I just have to delete without reading. And I'm sure Trump gets 2,000 emails a day that he has to delete without reading, okay? So there's a difference between meta issues and micro issues. Geoengineering and water pollution and free energy and public education, all of these are micro issues. The meta issue is election reform. The meta issue is intelligence reform, governance reform, and financial reform. Those are the top level issues. And so my sense is that Donald Trump, with help from William Binney and I, uh, has in fact got the names of all of the traitors, all of the elite pedophiles, and all of the white collar criminal bankers, such as the leadership of Goldman Sachs. Um, and I think he is on the verge of accomplishing a, a destruction of the deep state chain of command in partnership with not just Xi and Putin, but some leaders like in Saudi Arabia, where you just saw a number of princes uh, put down uh, and property confiscated. I think you will see more feeding of NSA data about traders to other countries and other countries will start to clean themselves up. <clears throat> now, if I've learned one thing about Czechoslovakia from Charles Bednar and Zdenek Sluka was the other guy, um, it's, it's a pretty decent country with some very smart people. Uh, and I would, I would uh, not give up hope. All of the people in the police and other elements of the Czech government that are attacking the people, they're good people trapped in a bad system. And so just continue to educate and continue to act ethically and legally. This is not a time for violence and it's not a time for sabotage. It's a time for conscious goodness. Uh, and I do believe that uh, one day in the future, we will see governments once again represent people. Uh, for me, it feels like that the New World Order has been built up uh, at least 3,000 years. Uh, Jacob Rothschild, he said that they have tried to get to Jerusalem in 3,000 years. Not happening. Well, uh, the Balfour, he was talking about the Balfour. No, no, I, I understand. Jerusalem, and I have no power and no influence. But I believe that Jerusalem is going to be an international city at the same time that the Vatican loses its diplomatic status and the Catholic Church is broken up into national enclaves. Because if this book is to be believed, the Catholic Church is the Illuminati. Uh, along with the Chabad Jews and the Ashkenazi Jews at the very top, Eric Schmidt, that kind of person. Uh, I mean, it's amusing to me that Eric Schmidt created a Google Gestapo censorship system that is so good that the Chinese communists are looking at it. Imagine that, a censorship system made in America that the Chinese communists like. I mean, this is, this is Eric Schmidt's greatest accomplishment in life, apart from fake news. Uh, and manipulating everything. Um, so I believe we're moving in the right direction. Uh, and I think that the day is going to come when the European Union, for example, breaks up. 
The day is going to come when Catalan and Scotland and Ireland and Australia and Canada are all free of the Queen of England. Um, we are moving toward a restoration of the Native American, indigenous native, worship of Mother Earth, do no harm, make consensus decisions in a peaceful manner. I mean, the Native American Indians would sit around in a circle and they wouldn't leave until everybody agreed. And sometimes that would take a long time. Um, so we're returning to the harmony of nature and we're returning to the harmony of people in conversation. It's hard because they've spent 3,000 years trying to destroy that. Do you know that the BBC has um, in their program that um, Elizabeth Windsor, uh, that she is descendants of Prophet Muhammad, that they push this propaganda there? And also, well, let me tell you something. The British royalty sleeps around a lot. Uh, now, Diana was murdered, I think, in part because she was about to have an Arab baby, an Egyptian baby. Uh, so there is no, there is no honor uh, in some elements of the British royal family. Now, I have high hopes for Prince William and, and Princess Kate. They certainly are a beautiful couple, but I have no direct knowledge. Uh, I do believe that all of us can be traced back to three people in the Middle East. Uh, the DNA has been studied and it's maybe three, maybe four. Um, bottom line is we all have shared descendants. We all have a shared history. In many ways, what people have been doing for the last 3,000 years is creating this massive fabric of lies that seek to concentrate wealth for the 1% and with the Caesar's Messiah, keep the 99% turning the other cheek. Uh, we're now at a point where the 1% understand that the pitchforks and the torches are coming out. The game is over for them. Now, I'm a huge truth and reconciliation guy. It's much better for the public if we educate all of the people rather than hang a few of the people. Education is how we prevent this from happening in the future. So truth and reconciliation is very, very important. I don't have a vindictive bone in my body. I just want the Rothschilds to get out of the way. And what I'm told by people like Ben Fulford and Neil Keenan is that's exactly what the Rothschilds want to do. They're liquidating in Austria. They're trying to downsize. They're trying to get out of the way. And that's a good thing. And by the way, I like Lynn Rothschild. She sponsored a conference on inclusive capitalism. It was totally screwed up by the Henry Jackson Society, a bunch of neo-fascist idiots. But it was the right idea. So I believe that elements of the Catholic Church, elements of the Rothschild family, elements of the Chabad Jews all understand that the game is over. It's done. They've lost. They will never, ever get back to where they thought they were going to be. Uh, now the question is, can we, the people, get our act together? And on that, I'm not so certain. Well, uh, I have heard that uh, Lynn Rothschild, when she she was married sometime late in the end of 2000, year 2000, that they have bought some apartment watching the Twin Tower be attacked. Well, I, I, I've, I've read that they had foreknowledge and they were in a hotel suite watching oh, the 9-11 uh, event. The 9-11 event, 13 countries warned us in advance. And Dick Cheney swore all 13 of those countries to secrecy. He declared a counter, a national counterterrorism exercise months in advance of 9-11. The Federal Emergency Management uh, Command Center was set up on the piers of New York City the night before 9-11. This is why there are so many government drills that are coincident with false flag attacks. 9-11 was not done by ragheads with box cutters. It was done by the Zionists with Dick Cheney as their executing authority. Um, they spent a year deepening the channel so that they could destroy the crime scene and get rid of all of the evidence. Uh, the dogs were taken out two weeks in advance and then controlled demolitions put in. The dogs were not allowed back or they would have gone crazy. Uh, World Trade Center was not hit by anything. The Pentagon was visibly hit by a missile. We, we just don't do honest investigations in the United States. From the Kennedy assassination where the assassin, Alan Dulles, was on the Warren Commission explicitly to make sure that the Warren Commission did not have the correct outcome. The 9-11 Commission was run by a Zionist, 
uh, Philip Zelikow. He's a, he's a piece of crap uh, who works for the Zionists, and his job was to cover up the whole 9-11 thing. Uh, Robert Mueller is director of the FBI. His entire responsibility in life was to cover up 9-11 and to not allow anything to get close to Dick Cheney. I don't bear any ill will toward Dick Cheney. He did what he thought he had to do, but I want him to be completely exposed to the public before he dies, just like George Bush Sr. should be completely exposed to the public for his role in the assassination of John F. Kennedy for his role in perpetuating all of the evils that CIA represents. And again, I stress, CIA is 90% good people trapped in a bad system. I want to save CIA, actually, and turn it into the classified intelligence agency with new divisions for signals and imagery intelligence. And then I want to eliminate the National Security Agency, the National Reconnaissance Office, the National Geospatial Agency, and probably the Defense Intelligence Agency as well. So we're at the very beginning. I expect to live another 40 to 50 years. Um, I believe we're at the very beginning of an era of, of human growth, personal growth, social growth, economic growth, such as has never been seen before. Because for the first time in history, our evolution and maturity is going to be very conscious and rooted in the 99% rather than the 1%. Yeah. Uh, my thoughts were, were the, the Illuminati they have um, made our rules so that the authorities and that uh, the principles that we have, the rules, how we is, um, conduct everything, is done by the Illuminati and by purpose wrong for us, for humanity. So we have to have uh, build up new rules and new authorities. And uh, that the system that we have one president in of United States is it good to have it uh, that way? Um, are you equally or more? I, let me let me say let me say two things. First off, I was interviewed by the Daily Bell, which is the libertarian rag, and they said if you were ever to to be elected president, what's the difference between you and all other presidents? And I said the biggest difference is I'm not running to be a decider and make money. I'm running to put integrity back into the system so that the public can be the decider. The biggest difference between me and Donald Trump today is that Donald Trump is still making decisions with his billionaire buddies with crappy intelligence. The U.S. intelligence community provides at best 4% of what he needs to know. If I were president, I would be educating the public and then having national ballot referendums on nationalizing the Federal Reserve legalizing marijuana and hemp, um, closing all U.S. military bases overseas, uh, throwing the United Nations out of New York, getting out of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, um, ending all U.S. taxpayer payments to dictators and Zionist Israel. Zionist Israel is getting $30,000 a day for every man, woman, and child in Israel, and they're turning around and using that to genocide the Palestinian people. As the Arabs say, enough. Um, so my concept of the presidency is to serve as a coach for the public rather than as the boss. And in fact, um, I call myself a chief enabling officer rather than a chief executive officer. So capital C, small e, capital O. That's chief enabling officer rather than chief executive officer. There's a huge difference between a top-down executive and a bottom-up consensus-driven organization. Um, so that's number one. I've forgotten what number two was. <laughs> we can take it next time, maybe. But till next time, you you find out. Yeah. What was your original question there? Yeah, I was thinking in this country. Oh, the rules. The rules. Yes. Here's my second point. Yeah. My second point is that the entire educational system has been designed to be a prison that destroys the creativity of the public. In fact, some NASA scientists have just come out. They've tested all these children from the time they're babies until the time they enter school. And they've come to the conclusion that all children are born geniuses. And then the school system beats the creativity out of them. I mean, you go to school for 18 years to sit still in a chair and raise your hand when you want to speak, and you're taught to not question authority. You are the authority. 
So that's the second point that I wanted to make. And one of the things that I've done, which has been very, very interesting for me, is to show that education, intelligence, and research must all be managed as one continuum. And I have a beautiful graphic that's been 40 years in the making that shows how you create a smart city and a smart nation and a world brain. And, and you know, the information industry is retarded by design. Microsoft for many years has been mutating and, and, uh, uh, mutating and uh, concealing application program interfaces explicitly to prevent third-party development. I have written a number of articles and chapters, including the foreword to an excellent book on CyberOSINT by Stephen E. Arnold, which I recommend to everyone. We have an information technology system that is in the 1950s. And all of this artificial intelligence stuff is on the edge. We do not have an information technology system that was designed to empower human beings. It was designed to empower corporations. It was designed like the internet, was designed for machine-to-machine -machine communications, not for human-to-human -human and not for data-to-data. -data. So we're at the very beginning of completely redesigning society. Uh, my first thesis on revolution looks at political, legal, socioeconomic, ideal cultural, techno-demographic, and natural geographic. In each of those pillars, we're at the very beginning of a revolution in humanity and how it goes forward. And it is a revolution that will be driven by the 99%, not the 1%. Could we do so that, uh, till next time, that uh, we could uh, have, like, what we could do, what do you suggest we would do with economy, uh, with education, with, uh, like, military, what kind of changes to, in order to have an ideal uh, society or, uh, global society and like nothing is of living it to think uh, innovative things that don't exist now could we have and you live in the United States so it's your home country that you would uh, change for the better and I am in Europe and well if if, if if I were president I think the first part is to re-educate the public and nationalize the Federal Reserve. Uh, I also see a debt jubilee in our future. We've established that the banks have stolen over $21 trillion. There is absolutely no reason why we cannot have a debt jubilee tomorrow. Not only eliminating the federal debt, because we should never have been borrowing money from banks, but eliminating individual debt. <clears throat> and I tried to suggest to Donald Trump that he create a website called Debt Be Gone in which each individual American, we have about $3 trillion in student uh, debt, elderly health debt, and small business credit card debt, and then uh, family debt. Donald Trump should be appointed the agent to renegotiate the debt for every single American. If he had a website in which every American in debt could enroll, among other things I was trying to tell him was this would give him the email for every American uh, who is in debt. Um, nobody has that, including Obama and Clinton. We need to eliminate the debt, start over. Very good, strong, biblical foundation, however much discredited the Bible may be now in some circles. I still believe in God. I still believe in the Bible as a useful reference document. Um, but debt jubilee is a start. Complete rebuilding of education. Our whole educational system has been completely corrupted. Uh, to the point that, that teachers are being fired for boycotting Israel, okay? I've written a very famous article now called uh, Zionism in America, Seven Strikes and Out. A teacher in Kansas was fired for boycotting Israel on her own time with her own money. I mean, we now have almost a neo-Nazi, a Zionist-led administration of our schools and our state and local governments and the federal government. In a United States of America where I was president, I would triple the budget of the FBI, I would process 100% of all NSA data, and every single traitor, elite pedophile, and white collar criminal will be out of business within 30 days. Yeah, a lot of people uh, perish, or vanish, disappear, children uh, in the United States, I have heard. That... Well, we can talk about pedophilia a little bit. I, I'm under major attack right now probably 
by a uh, media personality who is terrified that, that I might point my commission at him uh, because I think he is a murderous pedophile. Um, but I'm not a vindictive person. I mean, I only fight back when people pick fights with me. And so I'm trying to move from number 10 to number three on the Zionist hit list in the United States of America. Uh, because I think the time has come to expel the influence of Zionism across the United States of America. And that influence is rooted in pedophilia blackmail. Jeffrey Epstein is the poster child for one half of the Zionist blackmail system. The other half of the Zionist system is based in information technology penetrations. Uh, they learned in the 1980s with Robert Maxwell, who's the most famous Israeli spy in modern American history, that if they could control the information technology systems of governments and corporations, not only could they uh, protect and increase Zionist influence in all councils of government, but they could also have a business advantage. Ashkenazi Jews are doing well economically in part because they're benefiting from the Zionist economic espionage system. And people just don't realize this. They don't understand how pervasive all of this is. Now, I don't want to get too far into what pedophilia uh, operations we're going into, but let me just say this. The Judicial Commission on, um, of Inquiry into Human Trafficking and Child Sex Abuse is looking into not just child sex abuse, but child kidnapping, child sales. There are people in the United States who are giving birth to babies in order to sell them as a cash crop, okay? Then you have child slavery, child sex abuse. You have child torture to adrenalize the blood and for rituals and sick bestiality perversions. I'm worried that my Marines came back from Afghanistan with a taste for children because that's the standard in Afghanistan. But I'm also seeing evidence that the war dogs, the German shepherds in Afghanistan were trained to screw children. Uh, and basically there's now new videos emerging that show a German shepherd raping a child. And this is like the ultimate for, for some of these sick, sick people. Um, and then of course you have child murder when they're disposed of and you have child ritual murder. And finally you have the harvesting of child blood, child body parts and bone marrow. Very complex. What no one has ever done, which the Judicial Commission is seeking to raise funds and do, the International Tribunal for Natural Justice, we are seeking to document 8 million missing children a year. That's 22,000 a day. Now, we may not get to 8 million, but the 8 million is our starting number. That's where we think the number is. Um, and second, we're seeking to document precisely what happens to those children because it appears that most of them are dead within two years. The lifespan of a child brought into the pedophilia, uh, bestiality, satanic ritual network appears to be two years, with the exception of the children of the people managing the networks of uh, pedophilia and bestiality and satanic rituals. Those children are groomed to be the next set of leaders. So those children have a longer lifespan. It is perhaps the most worthwhile thing I can do for the world other than create the world brain and uh, solve all the sustainable development issues with uh, open source everything engineering because pedophilia is both the glue that keeps the deep state together to include the Pope flying in to bless the Illuminati and the satanic rituals on their annual meeting in the, in the castle. Um, so I have in my life three big things, well, four big things. One is a world brain, two is sustainable development, three is putting veterans into every political office in America. Congress now is only 18% veterans. We need to put veterans back into public government. So one of the things I'm gonna do this coming year, if the funding uh, materializes, is help put veterans into every office at the state, uh, local and national levels. Pedophilia for me, <coughs> is a form of public service. I believe it is the single most dangerous thing I can do with my life right now. And again, truth and transparency and truth and reconciliation. My intent with this commission, for which I'm also the chief counsel and the US envoy, is to educate the public rather than 
uh, hang a few people. It will be for the public to decide later how to define justice for the people that we expose. My going in intent is to simply make the public aware far beyond Pizzagate. Pizzagate was the beginning of public understanding of the fact that pedophilia is something that Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama uh, and uh, Denny Hassert, all of the elite Republicans, in fact, most of the resignations from Congress in recent months are, in my view, not about sexual harassment. They're about pedophilia and blackmail over pedophilia. Mm. Oh, it's very important to to work with this. Uh, it's awful. And um, yeah, and also you talked about 9-11 how many years it's uh, 17 years ago and still there are people who believe the official story it would be Im it's important that uh, americans uh, get the knowledge who who did it how was uh, and do you know about the um, uh, organization british israel world federation that was built like 100 years ago a british organization no, no, but it, 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 it doesn't it doesn't surprise me. Um well, that I mean, 9 11 and, and things like this is micro. Um an open source agency would have an information division and an engineering division, and inside of the information division would be a history division. This history division would rewrite world history. Yeah, so that people would understand this British Israeli thing and plan Odom. Uh, the bloodlines associated with Hitler, all of this stuff would come out in a very transparent, truthful way. We need to re-educate the public. Certainly yeah. we need to educate the public on all Holocausts, not just the Zionist Holocaust. The Armenians, the Chinese, um, the Rwanda. I mean, you know, part of history is what you ignore, not just what you lie about. We have ignored holocausts and genocides for all the other peoples of the world because the Zionist intent is there's only one holocaust that matters. Crap. Yeah. What I want to say that uh, this organization, British uh, Israel World Federation, had an article in a new British newspaper in the year 1922, I believe, that the new world order will start on 17th of september 2001 and if you look how the buildings were built that went down on the 9 11 so the building seven is trapezoid shape which is the, who would build a trapezoid if you are not a satanist and want to take down it's a reconstruction so they were building these three buildings to take them down. They knew that they will put them down. That's very interesting because I have seen evidence that the Zionists began planning 9-11 in 1988. And Christopher Boyle and a couple of others have done some very, very good historical, completely documented, accurate, reliable, credible reports on how the Zionists began thinking about 9-11 in 1988. But what they were waiting for was Dick Cheney as vice president. They needed Dick Cheney controlling the entire U.S. federal government. I mean, he moved the strip alert aircraft. He moved them from the East Coast to Alaska. He, you know, he did everything he needed to do. And, and I am really stunned at the ignorance of the public. Um, it's, um, they've been trained to be ignorant. I mean, we have a sacred duty going forward, which is to educate the public to revert back to every child is a genius. Yeah, and then, uh, you know, also Dov Zagheim, uh, the Zionist, that when first he was involved in 9-11 heavily, and then he left for Israel with money of U.S. Americans, a lot of money. Who is this? Dov Zagheim, it's a family, Zagheim, uh, his grandfather, uh, I believe, he was involved in the Russian Revolution to take down the Tsar. Well, it's it's certainly interesting. I mean, the guy that the guy that I'm looking at for 9/11 is Arnon Milshan, uh, as well as Larry Silverstein and the heads of the AIG, uh, and of course Michael Chertoff. 
Um, there are a number of people that have to be brought to justice, uh, at least in terms of educating the public. I mean, 9-11 was also insurance fraud. Yes. There is no insurance company on the planet that would have paid out $7 billion without a proper investigation unless they were part of the cover-up. Uh, and $7 billion is a drop in the bucket compared to the $250 billion that was laundered on 9-11 from the Black Eagle Trust, uh, which was Buzzy Krongard and Deutsche Bank and uh, Brown and Root working with CIA and under George Bush's supervision to bankrupt the Russian economy. So all of this is connected. All of this is covered up. We've probably come to a good stopping point. Um, yeah. But let me say that I am very pleased with your questions, and I think you're on the right path. I like Czechoslovakia very much. Uh, Charles Bednar taught me that Czechoslovakia was extremely smart and a great country. Uh, and even though you've been broken up a little bit, uh, I would be honored to be invited to Prague at some point, only hopefully with many more lectures, not just one. Yes, it will. It would be a great start in September if we can uh, make it to the conference. So you are very welcome. <laughs> okay, Robert, thank you so much uh, for all time, and I hope we could talk another time again. <laughs> I welcome your future invitations. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye.